Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy! Okay, great. So today on The Idiot Quilter Presents, I have a friend of mine who is on The Quilter's Way. Uh, she's an original member of The Quilter's Way. You know, that's the online membership site that I belong to, and so does Hannah. And I have been calling her by the wrong name forever. I've been saying Tanya. It is Tana, like Sana. So this is Tana McBee. And Tana, tell us, uh, where are you located? I am in Navarre, Florida, which is the Northwest area. Okay, People it must be cool. Must be quite Florida. warm there right now. <laughs> it is. It is. We could be doing this outside, but you'd melt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would. Um, We're um, very close to Pensacola. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've we, been around that area before many years okay. ago. So how long have you been quilting? Well, my husband said, look at your watch. No. <laughs> <laughs> Short period of time. Actually, um, in total... Um, actually quilting probably just a couple of years, maybe, maybe as many as four, trying to get the whole thing in my brain, sort of, right. which is still hardly there. So yeah, I've only been quilting for about four years too. So we must have both got started in this at the same time. But yes, were you you're a far sewer? more advanced than I am? Well, not really. I just mm -hmm. fake it. <laughs> so you're doing we're, fine. Were you a sewer before quilting? I had sewn a lot in my 20s and teens. Um, Mom kind of got me started with 4-H and stuff like that. But um, I gave it up probably when I started teaching golf. So I didn't do any after that. And right. I made the mistake of going to a quilt show with a friend. <laughs> And then you were it bitten by the bug. <laughs> it was all over. Yep, yeah. I know that feeling. So you said that uh, you got started in sewing because of the influence of your mother in the 4-H club. Right. So how did you get started in quilting then? You said you went to a quilt show and it was that inspired you? It was just that or? Well, you see, can you see that thing hanging on the wall behind me? Yes, you can. I have always loved for the... I applique quilts from Hawaii. I just yeah. think they're beautiful. Well, I completely forgot about that. And then when I saw that piece at the quilt show and it was at a silent auction, I bid on it and I brought it home. And um, then my friend kind of said, well, why don't you come to Quilt Guild with me? And then we started doing little things and um, then another friend decided that she would join us as well. So there we were learning how to do things. So it just went on from, from there. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, the uh, Hawaiian quilts too, the applique in them. I've never attempted to make one, but it seems funny that for someone who just got into it, you plunged right into Hawaiian applique. Well, I haven't done any. Oh, I'm, okay. Don't be misled. I haven't done any. I still just love looking at it. But I have seen a couple of videos lately about how to do some needle turn applique mm. that's not the, as Rob would put it, the old fashioned way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I watched his interview. You two were great. <laughs> yeah, well, I've had some requests to have Rob uh, again sort of on to talk about uh, other things. So, because he is a wealth of knowledge, but this oh. isn't about Rob. This is no, all about you. <laughs> well, right I enjoy listening to him and you and all the other people in our online class. I just, that has been such a blessing to me just to be able to have that, be able to go ask questions and learn from all those people and the different yeah. things they do. Yes, the Quilter's Way is definitely a great resource. I've learned so much since yeah. I've been part of that. And it all comes from other people who have quilted. And we're all at different levels or experience. Right. And that's really the beauty of it all. So yeah. you said your mother influenced you. Did anybody else influence you in your family? 
Did anybody else uh, quilt in your family? Uh, evidently, mother did. I wasn't aware of it at the time. Mm -hmm. And I have a sister-in-law who's been quilting for some time. She has, um, has her own long arm, but we're so far apart in miles that I haven't really seen any of her work. Right. But besides the quilting, you know, I do crafty things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of us as quilters do other crafty things too. You know, I think it's just in our blood. So yeah. what's your favorite creation to date and why? Well, um, hmm, the fa well, I just gave my husband a quilt of honor, which I have sitting hmm. behind me, which I'll be happy to show you. I would love to see it. Um, and that was, um, you know, there's the Quilt of Valor group. And right. They have specific things that you have to do to, to have it be a Quilt of Valor. So this one is not that, but it's the same concept. It was thanking him for his service. And uh, it was because of another member in our Quilter's Way that I was able to do this as a panel, make sure I have it upside down here. Oh, that's gorgeous. Love that panel. Well, it was Dana Lee that suggested I look for a panel because I had a very short period of time. Yeah, but that so is great. And did you panel, quilt that yourself? No, sir. I have a I have a new friend from Guild that has a long arm. Ah, okay. It's always good to have friends. <laughs> and, yeah. And I I wasn't willing to put my feeble attempt at free motion when I wanted this to be something really terrific. Well, it is terrific. It's I really was nice. Very happy with it. And he was yeah. he said okay. now when, he, when we go to bed we can play taps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what you call it? Oh, okay, we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> call it what you want i will okay well i have a great imagination for things you know <laughs> now, yes so, i've noticed getting us back on topic here uh what type of quilter do you describe yourself as are you traditional modern something in between experimental innovator oh not very traditional i really like the look of a lot of the modern quilts like um and yet, um, I I jump I, like the lady, the Milner that you interviewed. She said, yes. "I go down this little rabbit hole, and then I find another." I am constantly yeah. down rabbit holes. Uh, me too. Trying to find new little things, and but um, the quilt that I did that took a year because mm -hmm. we did a row a month. Oh that yes. certainly was not traditional. Um, and, and again, learned so many things because we had to do so many different types of, of quilting right. um, and piecing. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think like you too, I jump around. I mean, I see something new. I'm like a squirrel, you know, like, oh, I got to try that. Good and word. unfortunately that leads us to UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I am, um, I try really hard to finish a project before I start another one, even though I might be thinking about right. what I'm going to do the next three or four things. I don't have a lot of space, so I can't, although that's a bit of a lie because I have two UFOs now waiting to be quilted. So there was a bit <laughs> of a lie. Yeah, I think I've got five that I have to quilt yet, and I just mm -hmm. haven't got around to it. You got to be in the mood you know, for, for the quilting part. But I have found, because you were saying that you're sending them out to this friend with a long arm and that you're, you don't feel you're up to capacity yet to do free motion. Well, you know what I have found? That's the way I felt too. I still do not do free motion quilting well, but with each quilt that I do, I push myself, I get a little better. So what they say about practice is true. Yeah. And you got to get over the barrier, or at least I have found for me, the fear factor that I'm going to wreck my quilt. You're not. It's well, it, it'll yeah. turn out fine. Yeah. It yeah. won't be perfect, but no, nothing's you know, perfect. Done it better than perfect. Done better than so, perfect. Say. So yeah. speaking about your uh working work area, can you describe it for us? I see parts of it behind you. Well, it that's the back wall. 
the good news is when we moved to Florida, which is like two years ago now, I actually got a room, but it does have the computer in it too. So right. it is a little bit of shared space. And then I have a closet that I have my fabric in boxes due to the fact that we did have a water event, not Ooh. from a hurricane. Oh, okay. And my room was underwater. Oh. Jeez. But everything that was important was in boxes, plastic boxes. So oh, not, not good. material got ruined. But I have, um, I have a bookcase type thing so I can put fabric in that and I have my books in there. And so it's, it's compact, but it's neat. And I have learned that I don't work well in a mess. Yeah, I know how you feel. I'm the same way. Yeah, with it. it's, it's got to be pretty clean and and I also learned that for me the most important part that I had to learn the hard way always the hard way for me <laughs> is if you don't cut it correctly you can't piece it correctly oh yeah been there been oh, there gosh yeah and you know you bite off something not knowing whether you're going to be able to chew it or not and then you find out oh now I got to go back and make that again because it wasn't cut right yep and you want to know something I've heard that same thing from people who've been quilting for 20 years that for some reason they cut something wrong didn't realize it and then they were trying to figure out why their blocks weren't going together properly and I've done it too many times so it happens to all of us I guess that's just part of the process. I, I guess you're right because I, uh, but um, like other people that you've spoken with, the Martelli rulers made all the difference in the world for me. Yeah, I don't have any of those, but I'm thinking of getting some because everybody seems to rave about them. So it's yeah. a learning curve. Yeah. It's a learning curve. And fortunately, I had not had much success doing it with the uh, acrylic rulers. I would be off to the right side all the time. Yeah. And um, then I, you do have to relearn a little if you're yeah. at all proficient with the others. But their, um, their tools are amazing. They really so speaking are. Speaking of that kind of thing, tools, what is your favorite tool or technique? Oh, I don't know that I have a favorite. There's still so many things to learn and so many things that right. I'm still learning. I don't, other than my, my ability to somewhat cut straighter, um, <laughs> probably my, um, depending on what I'm working on, right. either my sewing machine, my, my Janome, or my old, old, old Bernina that will sew <laughs> through rocks. <practically>. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so what, what genome do you have? Which model? I have a 9,400. That's oh, yes. Separated. Yeah. The, yeah. Nice machine. Nice machine. It is a nice machine. Yeah. And I still don't know everything it can do. Well, you want to know something? I think that's with everybody because I mean, you can read the manual from cover to cover and I have on mine and you can't absorb all that information. I just look at it now as on a need Needing. to know basis. Yeah. You know, or if I think, hey, can my machine do this? Then I'll go to the manual or I'll go to YouTube and I'll see what I can find right. out. It's right. just too much information to absorb all at once. Yeah. So, and I don't, did, yeah. I don't know if your, your machine has a Facebook group, but mine does. And uh, we're supposed to be going through our manual as a group. Oh. And that's been pretty helpful. I, I can't see that I caught up. I know that Janome has Facebook groups for sewing and for the artistic digitizer for embroidery, but I've never looked into it, never thought of it to see well, if there's a specific group. this is not from group. the Janome site. It's a separate group that some separate. lady started and there's not any instruction. It's just like, you know, here's what I found. Here's what she found. Here's what he found kind of thing. I'm gonna make a note of this because I'm gonna do a search and see if there's one for my machines yeah, out there as well, helpful. because never thought of that. Okay, good tip. So if you had all the money in the world, is there a piece of equipment that you would invest in? I probably would invest in a long arm. Yeah. But then I'd have to move somebody out of the house. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I'd take over the guest room. 
Yeah. <laughs> There'd yeah. be no more gas. The two things that keep us all from buying a long arm, the money and a space to put it. And usually you can find the money. <laughs> it's no, the space. I wouldn't even go looking for it. No. I just think, you know, if you can buy a long arm, matter of fact, the, I was talking to my friend who has one and she said, that's my, that's my new car. Yeah. Well, they're as much and as a new car. Yeah. yeah. But she, she justifies it because she does nothing but make king size quotes. Ah, right. So, and yeah, oh. she's not going to be able to force those underneath the throat of her sewing machine, no matter how big it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I would like a long arm myself as well. So have you ever belonged to, to uh, well, I think you have because you mentioned yeah. a guild. Yeah. And how was that experience or how was that experience for you? Well, I I've, I've have belonged to two different ones, one in Arkansas where we moved from. And um, the ladies were very kind and helpful. And we did have at every meeting someone showing, well, everybody shows their stuff. Right. And then someone might give a class. Hmm. Um, the one that I belong to here in Florida, we have a meeting one day a month and we have B one day a month. Oh, okay. And our vice president gives some, we've had speakers, we've had uh, classes. Last month, we all um, brought our sewing machines and sewed a block for a quilt of valor that our group hmm. will give. And I heard you talk about your experience with that. And I'm sorry yeah. that that happened that way, but I got to thinking about it and I kind of understand, I'm not, may, I'm not apologizing for them because it was rude, but um, you know, women have put up with the opposite for so long that they yeah. just kind of go, you know, and I'm sorry it happened. And I'm glad that you have a resource that you, you found that the guys get together to quilt. Yeah. Because yeah, it's a it, good, good thing to have the interaction and the yeah, it is, to to. and you do learn quite a bit from a guild as well. But yeah, I'm a little bit, as you know, not getting into it. But as you know, I'm I'm a little burned <laughs> by yeah. by it, so a little yeah. shell shock, I guess, or whatever. So, but yes, I have found online ones that are working out very well for me. And of course, there's the quilters way. And although we're not a guild, it's still nice to get together with people you know when we do the live and things like that so plug out there for the quilters uh or for the quilters way exactly um, because it is a great job with us. it's a great resource yeah so what's your favorite store for supplies and materials or do you buy everything online or a combination i spread the money around okay I do, you're very I good best. I, <laughs> I support my local economy and i support the internet um yep we have uh, a couple of really well-stocked stores um, in the area, one on either side of me. And um, I do a lot with Missouri Star. I do a lot with Jordan out of Oregon. Mm. Um, I like the Jordan pre-cuts that Matt does because there's no pink edges. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the pink edges are a problem. Uh, yeah. And... Um, Fat Quarter Shop does a nice job online. So there's a lot of resources that way. I'll tell you what I realized a couple of days ago. I love fabric. <laughs> I just love it. Yeah. And then I found Cafe fabric. Oh, yes. That makes my heart sing. Yeah. I just go. Phew. So and there's a whole box of it over here that has hardly been cut. Because it's yep. like, pet it, <laughs> don't, don't yep. cut it. <laughs> I know the feeling. My very first quilt was made, I got into quilting because I saw a, K fa a quilt made with K-facet, uh, basically. And yeah, I, I love it too, the same thing. And there, just, you just don't want to cut into it, do you? It's, it's just too pretty. So oh, I'm saving it for something special, you keep saying, but there's never anything that comes along that's special enough for it. So fortunately, have I have some in colors I don't like, and I made a, a purse out of that. So yeah. that <laughs> kind of helped me get, okay, you can yeah. cut this. Yeah, break the ice yeah. sort of a thing. Yeah. So who are your favorite? Do you have some favorite experts or 
places that you go for besides the quilters way, but like online or wherever for help or for advice or for inspiration? Um, a couple of things. Um, this was another thing that I, I thought about with the quilting guild. My expectations were that they would have things for beginner quilters, not necessarily true. Right. So um, fortunately for me, a couple of the ladies have taken me under their wings and they are a fabulous resource. They just, one had, did nothing but hand quilting for years. The other one's done everything. Calls me a Philistine because I won't do turn, <laughs> turn applique, <laughs> needle turn applique. But um, that has been a great thing. YouTube. Yes. Is where I go for everything. Yep. And sometimes Pinterest, but I'm getting kind of burnt out of that. But, um, you know, your videos and Kim's videos and all of the others. And you just, some days you're just kind of down a rabbit hole and you find the right thing. Oh, yes. You know exactly what you mean by that. So do you have any challenges or goals in for the future in terms of any projects you might like to do? Bucket list kind of things? Um, I do. I have, um, now that I have that one finished, I've got the one that we did when we did wrangle the scraps last year still isn't finished. So that's got to be quilted. I have one that I did with Pat Sloan that has to be quilted. Um, I've learned that I don't like doing blocks that are all separate and different sizes and stuff like mm. that. So I'm challenging myself to use my own fabrics, get rid of some of this stuff <laughs> and make some quilts. And our guild does a lot of uh, community quilts. Right. So um, I have one waiting to be cut and done while we're sitting here, but I like bright colors. Yeah. And so I'm going to just let myself go and do some, learn how yeah. to do more yeah. without waiting for somebody to take me by the hand. I have two bucket list ones. I want to do a Lone Star and I want to do a New York Beauty. Now, I'm yeah. not familiar with that one. I have... I have the thing to do the Lone Star. I have the yep. Martelli thing. So hopefully it'll be easier. Yeah, I actually have a kit. And before uh, that is all printed out, you do it as paper piecing. I've never gotten to it. But I was signed up for a class at my local yeah. quilt store to do uh -huh. a Lone Star. And then COVID hit. COVID and so did. I've never taken the class. If they're going to have the class, but probably not until after January, they're thinking now. Uh, with that so I will take that then so I'll get one of them done but the New York okay. Beauty I fell in love with that the first time I saw it what and is it is it it's all points blocks? oh yeah it's if you do a search you'll find them and they're they're, they're different designs but they call them a New York Beauty because they actually look like the the crown on the head of yeah. the Statue of Liberty oh good luck to you sir yeah that's why I haven't done it yet because yeah, that see. is a project that once you get into it, you know, it's all or nothing. Yeah, so, but the paper piecing will help make those points oh yeah. easier yeah. to do. Yeah, that's that, true. And I've done some paper piecing, but not a lot. So I'd have to relearn again because, you know, you oh, get yeah. really screwed up on paper piecing. On yeah, it's found. like your brain has to go upside down and backwards. Yeah, exactly with that. Yeah. So um, now I consider people who are quilters as artists i know that's not a popular feeling in the fine art world if it's not painted if you're not being paid for it if you're not exhibiting it's not art well that's bull roar quilting is definitely art so as an artist because you are what how would you um describe yourself as an artist now what i'm talking about here is would you make a little further out than modern or traditional? More like, are you experimental? Are you um, innovative? Do you like to try new things? Or do you, you know, how would you oh, describe yeah. yourself? <laughs> um, probably innovative, but at such a beginner level, I'm looking so forward to the lady that's going to teach us how to use string and art to embellish. Mm things right. and we're going to have a class on that and I'm like I'll I'm really excited about that because yeah. I think that 
that really lets that little gene that says, oh, let's try this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Work. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, you know, it's like, it's like what you have behind you in the, in your picture with all the little strings and things. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like, and somebody, somebody had to come up with that. Now, yeah. being inventive is not my necessary I don't have that gene, but I can copy pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that, that sounds really interesting to do. So do you have any advice for anyone who may be just getting started in quilting? It'd be the same one you and I heard that we didn't follow. <laughs> if you Which, don't cut it right, you can't sew it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. I don't know. I guess there are some people who actually are inclined to do everything by directions. I'm one of those right. open the box, take it out and see how it works. Don't right. bother reading the manual. So yep. learning how to cut and do it correctly. If you don't, you're just going to pick it out and have to cut a new piece. So save your material. Yeah. That's right. I mean, after all, fabric is kind of expensive and we try to get the most out of it for our buck. So yeah, right. I think that's really good advice. And I think a lot of people do struggle with cutting and there's lots of resources though out there to help you with that right. as well. But you know, it's not just cutting. Like it's you just don't just go and hack away. The door, let's whack it out. No. Yeah, <laughs> not, can't do that. I mean, I don't know how people survive making quilts when they didn't have rotary cutters. I mean, Oh, or templates. Yeah. My friend that took me to the quilt show when she started, she had to make her own templates. Yep. Yeah. Like, my grandmother did that. Yeah. My grandmother happened. took cereal boxes, cardboard, mm -hmm. and she made her own templates from those. But she did all her quilts were all completely handmade, like right the patchwork right through to the quilting. But she was a really great seamstress, like or sewer. She just she won awards over the years for her sewing ability but well the anyways, other thing i think yep. would be for quilting is make sure that that quarter inch seam is correct and if yep. you need a scant you've got two choices if you can't move your needle over then you better get thinner thread yeah that's the yep. only way it works that that's very important because you know a lot of people they get started i did when i first got started i thought I'm not quite a quarter inch. It's no big deal. Oh, it's yeah, it's close. a big deal. I mean, yeah. if you're even out by an eighth of an inch, it multiplies when you put your That's, blocks together. Yeah. And so, yeah, some of my earlier quilts are quite wonky because of that it was an artistic design yeah that's why I say that's and yeah, it's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So do you have any parting words before uh, we say goodbye to this interview? Anything you'd like to share? I just think, think I just think if there's even a question in your mind about whether or not you want to try it, you should try it. Exactly. Yeah. Give it a whirl. Borrow a sewing machine. Yeah. See if you like it on a borrowed machine. Like if you do, then there's a whole world of where you can send your money to to get nice <laughs> machines. Don't I know that? Yes. But, don't you know that? Oh yeah, all the time. So okay, well. Uh, Tana, thank you so much for this interview. It's great. I'm going to be putting this up very soon. It'll probably be up next week from now. And I'm just going to end the recording, but stay on the line for a minute, if you will, please. But sure. thank you so much for doing thank this. You. And you see, it didn't hurt, did it? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay.